Good to see you again, buddy. Good one. And there's my. Hey guys, Dusty Baker of Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Thank you guys for watching us. We are back at the Dunbar place. You just can't get enough of Dunbar and Eleanor and the crew. So we are here. We're going to go visit them. We are going to check up on Eleanor and Nora and see how they're doing. And some of you had a lot of questions and comments, which I greatly appreciate um, for my last video of letting Nora and Eleanor back out with the herd. I'm going to talk to you about that today. All right, we're going to take a trip and mom and Kevin's ATV got us a sack of cubes. Hey, buddy. Hey, Thor. Hey, Thor. Everybody misses you. Maya, you want to go? Come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Get over to your spot. Let's go. Get over there. Get over there. Oh, that's not your spot. Come on. Maya. Scoot over. Okay. Maya says no. If you Oh, if you can't ride, if you can't be in the driver's seat, I guess you can't go, huh? Come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on, Maya. Let's go. Well, why just didn't we do that in the first place? All right, here we go. Let's go. Oh. Mr. Dunbar. Hey, buddy. Got you some cubes. Got you got some. Here's the entire bunch, and then there's Eleanor hiding. Even though I poured cubes out for her, she won't. Come here, Eleanor. Come here. Nora, 
second door. This guy is coming up on six years. He was born in 2017 along with Eleanor. So he'll be uh, six years old this spring and Big Joe will be seven years old this spring. I hope you guys understand a little bit more of kind of why we let Eleanor and her baby Nora back out here. You know, we just, we want bison to be bison. That's, that's the goal. Um, and, uh, you know, she was able to kind of get, uh, Nora was able to get back on her feet. And so we wanted to get her out here as soon as she could, uh, back with her family. And, uh, you know, it's playing with the calves. Uh, that's healthy for Nora. Uh, she needs to be able to play with calves. She needs to exercise and do those normal things that uh, calves would do. I don't know if you noticed, but the first thing that she did, Nora did, was she ran and she played with the calves. And she needs to be with animals that she can relate with a little bit more and be able to play with like these calves here. And that was one of the first things that she did was she wanted to hang out with the calves. And so she was able to do that. Um, she's able to be with some uh, calves her size. Those yearlings are a lot bigger than her and she's not able to kind of play and stuff. So uh, those are kind of two of the main reasons is 
they need to be out in a pasture where they can roam. The yearlings are pinned up right now because they're part of our feeding program and they're uh, in training sort of getting used to us. So that's the reason why uh, we keep the yearlings separated. We let them grow up because out here they're definitely not the most dominant. But something that um, I hope you guys understand a little bit more is Eleanor will never be the most dominant. That's just who she is. Every uh, there's every every system has a pecking order, and it, uh, it it's in livestock. It's in livestock. It's in it's in horses. It's in all all kinds of groups of animals. For Eleanor, she'll never be the dominant one, and that's just how life is with uh, Eleanor. And I know some of you want her to be able to have that dominant uh, pecking order in this, but it's not going to happen. And uh, but you know, Eleanor's different, first of all, and uh, because she is different, that's kind of why she's at the bottom of this system, and that's okay. She gets a lot of special treatment, guys. I promise you, she'll be six years old, just like Dunbar, um, this coming spring. Big Joe will be eight, and Dunbar and Eleanor, and then will be six years old. They were born in 2017, and I got them as yearlings in 2018. So I promise you, she is uh, she is special. And she's always been different to us, and she's always been approachable. Uh, I just remember that from the very beginning, back in 2018. I knew something was different with Eleanor. And so because of that, that's where she is on the pecking order. And that's okay, guys. So Kevin, I know, Kevin sees them uh, more than me at times. And so uh, I know when he feeds them cubes, he does his best to get Eleanor separated from the herd so that they can be taken care of, so that Eleanor can get her special treatment that she deserves so uh, i don't know about every bison producer out there but there's always typically one bison who kind of is just interesting and and different and that's just that's for us that's eleanor so um and and you know one of the other things that we have to think about is you know we want we want her to be able to breed again and with him she needs to be out here with dunbar now they'll be moved eventually uh, this whole group there's only there's only five females out here right now and there's five calves and you got this big guy right here so there's not that many bison uh as far as my breeding stock goes here Mike, what's wrong? what are you doing in here are you hanging out some of you were asking about uh the poop and the patties out on some of these fields um, well, why is there so much or what can you do with it? Well, guys, a couple of good ideas and comments I got from y'all was, uh, can you rake it and spread it out on your field? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We could do that. I think you'd have to go scoop it all up. Um, and then you got to have a machine when you pull behind the tractor to spread it. Uh, we don't have anything like that. Never really thought about it too much, but that's definitely something we can do. Um, I really don't want to pick that wet one up, but uh, you know a lot of this dry material like this one here uh, Was used for fire starter um, For you know Native Americans and whatnot. I'm sure some Explorers and some of the first pioneers used this stuff uh, For for fire starter and I'm sure across the Great Plains. It got pretty dry Uh, you know, it's basically uh, a lot of just dried up material in here. But uh, yes, this would be great if we could spread it out. And why, why you see so much of it right now is, guys, it's it's the winter time, and this is part of uh, in Oklahoma when the grass gets a little short and uh, the grass goes dormant. You know, they're feeding in a lot of the several of the same places as far as like where you roll out hay. Uh, for instance, that's where they're going to spend the portion of their day is next to that hay. Um, and so what do they do next to that hay that they that you roll out? They're going to poop and pee next to it, and then they're going to lay in it. If, if you're feeding right, your animals, they eat a lot of that hay, and you make them eat it. Uh, of course, they'll be nitpicky. They're going to avoid eating the hay that's got poop and pee on it. But uh, what, what happens, my point is, is you'll have lots of patties stacked up next to each other. And uh, you can see it right now because the grass is low and the grass has gone dormant. And the bison are kind of cleaning it up. You can see the patchiness here. You may not know it in the summertime, 
uh, you know, and nobody ever says anything about it in the summertime because we have plenty of grass and the grass is a lot taller um, in the summertime. And so you may not ever see the patties. And so a lot of that is because, uh, you know, the grass is taller in the summer. And then in the winter, uh, they tend to, wherever they're grazing um, or where they're eating hay, that's where you see a, a lot of it um, because of their patterns of where they're eating and whatnot. And so that's a little bit of explanation about uh, the poop. Uh, but it would be nice to actually spread it out and use it as fertilizer. Or you got a visitor behind you. You don't even know it, but it's Eleanor. She's coming for cubes. Hey, buddy, you better get out of it. The rest of them will show up. Here, here. Remember that special treatment I was talking about, guys? Here you go. Or she eats my hand off. And the rest of them. Ouch. Thank you for all of your questions and comments. I, I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what sparked this video and uh, is, is a lot of your questions and comments and concerns about uh, Eleanor and Nora. And so I appreciate that. I appreciate your uh, love and care for our animals. And I hope you understand a little bit more of why we do some of these things and some of those questions are answered. So keep on commenting and keep on asking those questions. We're all here to learn, right? And um, I'm learning every day from these awesome animals. So thank you guys for watching us today. Y'all keep a ranching.